church today as we come into the time of worship uh, to the Lord. Uh, we play the song, Shout to the Lord. Uh, we pray that we as a family and as a church and as a community can get together through this pandemic and as we can go back uh, soon to church and as we can come to worship together to the Lord. My Jesus, my Saviour, Lord, there is none like you. All of my days, I want to praise the wonders of your mighty love. My comfort, my shelter, tower. Once again, and thank you all for joining in. I want to thank Ryan and Peeb in a special way for taking on the first song and singing. Excellent work, Ryan. Thank you very much for coming forward and exhibiting your God-given talents. And we pray that you would continue to excel in whatever you do when it comes to serving the Lord. Great job. And for all of us here, just picked up two more songs. One is Your Beautiful Beyond Description and Amazing Love just talks about God's awesomeness. When you look at God's awesomeness, the way if one has to describe God, it's just beyond description, it's beyond our comprehension. Because He's such an awesome God. We can't just close Him up in a box and say, yes, this is God. No, He 
is way way beyond that he is way beyond our wildest imagination he's so amazing so powerful so loving and this gives us another chance for us to just sing his presence i mean sing his awesomeness to sing out his praises so let's just spend this time together singing god's praise you are beautiful beyond description to my
joy to honor you. Amazing love, how can it be that you, my king, would die for me? Amazing love, I know it's true. It's my joy to honor Thank you, Lord, for your marvelous sacrifice, Lord Jesus, because of what you did on the cross, dear Father. We are forgiven. We are clean once again, dear Father, whiter than snow, my Lord Jesus. And you have forgiven our sins and have promised to forget them, dear Father, as far as the east is from the west, dear Father. So have our sins been forgiven, my Lord, never to be remembered again. And what an awesome God you are, dear Father for giving us the privilege to come back to your presence, dear Father. And whatever form we are, dear Father, whatever state we are in, dear Lord, we don't have to earn ourselves to come back to you. We don't have to wash ourselves clean first. We just have to come to you, dear Father, and you in turn wash us clean. What a privilege. What an honor to serve such an awesome God. We thank you once again, dear Father, for this time of your presence within us, dear Father, with us, dear Father. And we just pray for your message, dear Lord, that will bless us, dear Father. In your precious name, Lord, we pray. Amen. Well, good morning, church folks. Um, it's been a while since uh, um, you know we've met each other um, in person, and um, but it's a it's a privilege to um, you know to be able to share the word of God with you here this morning. And I know that, um, and you probably also know as well. Um, you know, we've we're, we're in another lockdown here in Melbourne, and so. For some people, it may stir a lot of unsettledness, um, you know, during this lockdown. But nonetheless, um, let's just all be encouraged um, as believers in Christ, knowing that our hope is not fixed in this world, but that our hope is fixed upon the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Now, this morning, um, I, I want to just um, share a quick few thoughts um, and not really preach this morning, but it just as a way of uh, encouraging you here this morning because um, some of us may, may feel um, very, very far off, um, you know, uh, considering that, you know, we're in self-isolation again. Um, and so one of the ways that we can continually uh, encourage ourselves as well as um, you know, encouraging other brothers and sisters in Christ is to really look towards um, the Word of God as our source of hope, of courage, and of comfort. And with that said, I want you to um, listen to what the Word of God says in Psalms chapter 91. Um, and primarily, I, I just want to just um, sketch, um, just scratch the the surface of just one uh, verse one and verse two this morning as a way to really draw you um, into the presence of God knowing that you as believers in Christ um, we are not a people without hope we are a people who who is loved by God we are um, a people who are um, has um, you know a uh, God's best interest in our very own life. And so, you know, Psalms chapter 91 verses 1 and 2 really is it's just beautiful to just to draw reflection on as we meditate on that. But at the same time, um, it calls us to draw closer and even closer towards the Lord because we're, we're in a time where we don't know what's going to happen the next day. We don't even know what's going to happen um, six weeks from now because although isolation right now, lockdown now is for a period of six weeks, we just simply don't know uh, what is going to actually happen um, during these six weeks. And so rather than, I thought, rather than being um, overwhelmed and concerned about what's going to happen, um, I think it will be good for us to actually 
just draw and, and meditate on, on where we are at in our relationship with God, re reflecting on what it has been like during this isolation period and how can we develop um, a right appetite, um, a right lifestyle in, in terms of following Jesus in this world. And so Psalms chapter 91 verses 1 and 2 really just draws um, our thinking and our hearts and our minds um, to, to ponder on where we are at this stage. And, and so I want you to um, follow along with me in Psalms chapter 91 verses 1 and 2, which reads, He who dwells in the shelter of the Most High will abide in the shadow of the Almighty. I will say to the Lord, my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust. And, and as I reflect on that promises of God, um, it's just such a, a beautiful thing to, to realize that, hey, you know what? Our God is bigger than all of this. You know, despite all the confusion that is going on, despite of all of the uncertainties that are going on, you and I can take comfort, take courage in knowing um, and believing. And because we know, we, we know in whom we have believed in. And that's what the scripture says. Amen. We know in whom we have believed in because as we know, because we know according to the scripture and, and through a conviction um, that comes from the Spirit of God in our very own lives, we know that God is simply in control of all things. That is nothing in this world that is ever outside of God's foreknowledge. And yet at the same time, while we are in the midst of all of this, in the midst of isolation and lockdown, it is God's purpose that you and I would draw even closer to Him during this time. It is a time for us to be spiritually revived, to be refreshed. A new fire should be really be kindled in our very own life as, as we look to the Lord, despite of the chaos that is going around in this world. And, and the promise of Psalms um, applies to us. If you, if you, if you consider verse 1, he who draw near or he who dwells in the shelter of the Most High talks about us always drawing nearer into the presence of God. It is causing us, this whole pandemic thing, it's really just a way for us to really just draw closer to the Lord and just to continually trust in Him um, just even more than ever before. Because you think about how this COVID-19 has affected, you know, not just the hundreds and thousands of people, but possibly millions and billions of people, how their lives are just being disrupted. But yet the scripture says, the Bible says, he who dwells in the shelter of the Most High will abide in the shadow of the Almighty. Exactly. What does that exactly mean? even mean for us as Christians. You know, think about this. Prior to, to this pandemic actually occurring, if we were to truly honestly um, examine our, our own lives, you know, what were we, what, what have we been doing? You know, how was our relationship, what was it like with the Lord prior to this pandemic, um, you know, um, affecting our lives today? When we think about this, it, it really should cause us to think about our relationship with God even further. Um, and, and, and this pandemic, and this, this lockdown, this isolation really is a way for us to truly examine our walk with the Lord. Um, it, it's really a, a calling to remind us that we must daily fellowship with Jesus. We must be in constant communion with Him. And, and that's what um, Psalms, uh, Psalms 91 really talks about, is that despite of all the chaos that is going around, when we place our heart, when we place, place our lives, our trust into God's hands, we, we don't need to fear, you know, what's going to happen next. In fact, um, out of all people in the world, you and I as followers of Jesus Christ have the best insight 
as to what happened in the beginning and what will happen in the end. Amen. You and I have the best insight in comparison to the world who do not believe in Jesus. We know what is going to happen in this world, but yet we do not lose heart because the scripture says we, we know all these things, but we don't lose heart. And, and that's the blessings that you and I have, knowing that regardless of what happened, you and I can still daily draw near to God. We can daily um, continue to trust in the very goodness of God. And Psalms 91, again, talks about our relationship with God. Are we actually dwelling in the presence of God? Or do we recognize the very presence of God that dwells within us, giving us that complete assurance. You know, as, as I think about um, the presence of God in our life, um, I'm reminded of John chapter 14, you know, where, where Jesus is just um, with his disciples in the upper room. You know, this is way before, this is just uh, right before, um, before Jesus is being trialed before his crucifixion um, and, and before the resurrection, before any of that um, was, happen, uh, was about to happen, Jesus um, is with his disciples. And in John chapter 14, you know, Jesus begins to talk to the disciples about the promise of the Holy Spirit. Uh, Jesus is teaching the disciples um, who the Holy Spirit is and, and what the Holy Spirit will do. Um, and, and it's such a, a great assurance when we think about this in John chapter 14, where Jesus promises that those who love and obey God, who love and obey the Lord Jesus Christ, will be given the promise of the Holy Spirit. And, and, and the purpose of why the Holy Spirit was, was given and granted to those who believe is to be their comforter, to be their helper, because God knows. The Lord knows that as long as we live um, in this life, you and I are just going to face so many trials. We're going to face so many problems. We're going to go through a lot of testing because of our faith. But yet the promises of God is that he's going to give us his Holy Spirit through faith in Jesus Christ so that you and I can actually stand in the midst of these trials. And, and that's what we see um, happening um, in, in this day and age right now. You and I, we are going through a time of testing and through a time of trials in our life. And, and knowing that the presence of God is with us, that should all the more encourage us to trust in God even further as we walk this um, life in faith. And, and when we consider Psalms 91, he who dwells in the presence of God, of the Most High, really it talks about our relationship. It just talks about our relationship with God through Jesus by the power of the Spirit that dwells in us. And it's just such a beautiful um, moment to even think about because without the Holy Spirit, you, you and I would have lost hope a long time ago had it not been for the gift granted to us by the Father through Jesus Christ, the given of the Holy Spirit into our very own life. Now, one of the keys to actually understanding um, verse 1 and verse 2 is really understanding the God in whom we have believed in. In verse 1 and 2, I'll read it again. He who dwells in the shelter of the Most High will abide in the shadow of the Almighty. I will say to the Lord, my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust. And we think about this, one of the ways in, in which the, the presence of God is made known to us is through His names. The names of God. Okay, and, and the scripture talks about this so beautifully that really draws us even further in our relationship with God, recognizing that our God is such a, an awesome God. Now, you and I know that, you know, according to the Bible, God has many names. Um, and in each, um, each time when, when the name of God is mentioned, it, it reveals a different purpose of why God's name um, is, is identified in, in that sense. Um, and, you know, one of the prominent features of, of the, the Hebrew uh, poetry, uh, especially in the book of Psalms, is the restating of a thought using synonyms, meaning different words that mean the same thing. And, you know, um, I'm not sure, but 
in our culture, in my Cambodian culture, um, there are those of us who, who love to listen to um, Cambodian folk songs. songs. Um, and, and, and as we listen to these songs, there are different um, types of description that refers to the one th same thing. So for example, you know, when, when, when there's a love between a man or when a man thinks of a woman um, in terms of, um, you know, kind of, of, of his love for her, there are different ways to describe that person by different synonyms. And so the scripture is, is very similar in terms of when, when the psalmist um, repeats, um, you know, the, the name, the repeats or, or makes reference to God um, using different name, it, it's really reveal, revealing to us the distinct um, purposes for why the psalmist wrote the way he wrote. Because each name reveals who God is to his people. And in the same way, who, uh, who God is to us is, is very uh, important, especially when we consider the context in which we are living in right now. And there are four interesting points that I, that I want you um, to, to understand as we consider the meaning of some of the names of God just in verse 1 and in verse 2. And the first thing that, that we find in this verse um, is that God is the most high God. That the scripture talks about that God is the highest, the highest supreme being who owns the universe. You know, as such, he is all powerful that um, it gives the description that God can never be overthrown. And it's such a beautiful um, picture um, that describes the word um, you know, the Lord himself as the most high God, that God can never be overthrown. In Psalm chapter 47, verses 1 and 2, reads this, Clap your hands, all people. Shout to, the God, shout to God with loud songs of joy. For the Lord, the most high, is to be feared, a great king over all the earth. Meaning that the name of God as the most high God that there is, no other God besides our God as revealed to us as the one true living eternal God from the scriptures. Secondly, God's name is the Almighty, the Al Shaddai. Um, he is sufficient for everything that you and I need. That God is Al Shaddai, that God is sufficient for all our needs. God who who is everything to us. And, and when we think about this, you know, um, we, we examine ourselves. Is God um, our, our Shaddai? Is He really our sufficiency in all that we need that pertains to life? And as you think about the word, the Almighty, the Al Shaddai, we, we, the, 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 the scripture um, paints a picture for us saying um, in, in, in such a way that describes who God is, that God, um, by His inherent power, He sustains us. And He not only sustains us, but He protects us. And He not only protects us, but He provides for us. Amen? Consider, um, you know, the life of Abraham. When, when Abraham was 99 years old, you know, God appeared to Abraham and they said to him, I am God Almighty. Walk before me and be blameless that I may make my covenant between you, between me and you and may multiply you greatly. And it's back in Genesis chapter 17 verses 1 and 2. God's power as the Almighty God was with Abraham. And we recognize that, we realize that because it was by God's inherent powers that God has sustained Abraham, that God protected Abraham and God provided for Abraham. Now, then the third one, that God is the Lord. The Lord, as in, you know, in some scriptures, it refers to Yahweh or Jehovah, meaning that God is a faithful God who makes a covenant with us and he keeps his covenant without fail. He keeps all of his promises always. Isn't that so true? Isn't that so wonderful that God is faithful? You know, so faithful that he will always be with us, 
always faithful, always keeping his covenant promise. Think about Psalms chapter 23, um, verses 1 and 2, the faithfulness of God. When, you know, the Bible says, the Lord is my shepherd. I fear no evil because God is with us. You know, he prepares a table for us in front of our enemies. You know, goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our life. And we dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Keeping, you know, God is a covenant keeping God that he is a God who is faithful. Even right now, he is faithful in our life, in your life, in my life. He is a faithful God in whom we serve. Fourthly, God is Elohim. My God, okay, Elohim, that emphasizes the fullness and exceeding greatness of God's power. And it brings us this, um, this thought um, that when we say, my God, okay, we, we, we are talking about a relationship that you and I have through Jesus Christ, that through Jesus, you and I have this relationship with God. It is not just a, any other relationship. It is more of an intimate relationship, a personal relationship that we can actually know who God is. And that is all granted to us through faith and trust in Jesus Christ, knowing that that God is our God, He's my God, He is your God, that we actually have this relationship with Him that beautifully just paints of why you and I daily can just draw nearer and nearer to God. It, despite this um, lockdown that we're going through again, you and I can still um, have our complete trust in God, knowing that our God is going to be with us no matter what the circumstances that we will face faith, faced, uh, in life. Now, if you're familiar with um, the Old Testament covenant, um, you know, the blessings of God falls upon those who obeys, um, you know, the, the, the commands of God. But ha if, if the nation of Israel should fail to obey God, then the consequences are is that God's protection will no longer be there for the person. And so in the Old Testament, you know, God's covenant um, is only fulfilled when um, the nation of Israel will keep their covenant on their side. Now, how does this really um, apply to us or, or how can we make sense of this promise? Think about this. And remember, um, I mentioned in earlier on that you know Jesus promises the Holy Spirit in John chapter 14 and and the promise is that whoever believes in Jesus by believing and trusting in in the person and works of Jesus Christ remember that the promise of the Holy Spirit is granted to those who believe and what makes the new covenant um, better than the old covenant, according to scripture, is that the covenant that we receive through faith in Jesus Christ is an eternal covenant. When God grants us his Holy Spirit, God will never take his spirit away from us. And that's the wonderful promises of scripture is that God says he will never leave us or forsake us. And so how do we actually make sense of this promise of God um, in, in, in that kind of times that we're living in right now and this is where, where we're going to be really really tested you and i we can actually be confident knowing that despite all of the chaos that is going around we can stay we can still take um, hold on to the promises of god knowing that he who is in us will always be for us that the spirit of god who lives in us will always empower us to live in such a way that truly would honor him that would glorify him in ephesians chapter 3 verse 20 says this now to him who is able to do far more abundantly than all that we ask or think according to the power at work within us to him be glory in the church and in the and in christ jesus throughout all generations forever and ever. God's power, God's promises are always to us. 
especially in this day and age, because the love of God, God will never abandon us. Although we may feel that God is somewhat distance away from us, but remember that when we have the Holy Spirit in our life, you and I can always draw nearer to God. And, and that's the, the encouragement that we get because the call is for us to draw near to God. The call is for us to dwell in the presence of of God, knowing that God is our shelter, that God is our refuge. And when we understand the promises of God, when we understand that the Holy Spirit is with us and abides within us, that should all the more encourage us to draw nearer to God, to, to really um, appreciate and, 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 and you know, the relationship that we have um, uh, with God through faith in Jesus Christ. You and I have that open access. So if you're feeling um, down, if you're feeling isolated, remember the promise of God is this, draw near to him and he will draw near to you. Despite the circumstances, regardless of what others may say, the Spirit of God is in you, that works in you, and he wants you to just grow and draw closer even to him. And that's the promise that we have that really should encourage us and, and, and to lift our spirit up in times of troubles, in times of trials, in times of testing, knowing that God is always with us. Amen. Let's pray. Father, we just thank you for, um, for just today and, and just to really um, draw a reflection on, on your word and just to meditate on the goodness, Lord, of God. And, and Lord, I just, just thank you so much for what you are doing in each of our lives. And yet, Lord, knowing that despite the uncertainties of life in the secular world, yet we can still hold on to the promises that you are always with us, that you are always for us, and that you are always looking out for the, in the best interest of our life. And I just pray, Father God, that we would just draw nearer to you, Lord God, um, despite the circumstances that we may face or are in right now, Lord God, I just pray that our confidence, that our trust would draw ever uh, nearer to you during this time. I pray that you would bless my brothers and sisters here this morning, Lord God, as they commit their um, day to you, Lord God. I pray that we would just bring you honor and glory. It's in your precious name we pray. Amen.